This morning in our series Protecting the Planet, we're looking at how new technology might give America's aging coal and gas power plants a cleaner future. That technology is called carbon capture, and if new EPA rules take effect, most power plants that burn fossil fuels may have to use it or face getting shut down. Congress has allocated billions of dollars in subsidies to expand the use of carbon capture, but it has faced powerful criticism as well. Senior national and environmental correspondent Ben Tracy shows us now why some say that carbon capture is actually an expensive and misguided distraction in the fight against climate change. This is the National Carbon Capture Center, and kind of our main mission here is to test carbon capture. The National Carbon Capture Center sits along the banks of the Coosa River in Alabama. It looks a bit like something Willy Wonka might build if he ditched chocolate for carbon dioxide. How long have you guys been testing carbon capture here? So we've been testing uh, a total now of uh, over a decade. John Northington is the director of this Department of Energy Research Facility. It's attached to an operating coal and natural gas fired power plant run by utility giant Southern Company. So this place is like a very large laboratory. Yes, it represents about 135,000 hours of testing and over 70 different technologies. Coal and gas-fired power plants generate about 60% of the electricity in the U.S. and are the country's second largest source of planet-warming greenhouse gas emissions. Carbon capture stops CO2 emissions from going up the smokestack. They are separated out with chemicals and usually injected and stored underground. Does the technology work? Yeah, so the technology does work. What percentage of the carbon do you actually capture? Generally in the neighborhood of 95% capture. But so far, what's worked in the lab has not worked so well in the real world. The Petronova coal-fired power plant outside Houston was the first and only commercial plant in the U.S. to use carbon capture. It had technical issues, high costs, and was mothballed in 2020. Its new owner is now attempting to revive it. It's definitely not a silver bullet. MIT professor Charles Harvey says carbon capture and storage, or CCS, doesn't make sense because it now costs less to build new renewable energy projects such as wind and solar than to operate an existing coal plant. A dollar spent in the renewable technologies will avert a lot more emissions than, than CCS will. He argues carbon capture just allows the industry to keep burning fossil fuels. In fact, the carbon captured at the Petronova plant in Texas was used to extract more oil from the ground in a process called enhanced oil recovery. The frustrating thing is that there is an easy solution, and that's, uh, that's to stop using fossil fuels. We have the technology to do most of that uh, right now. And I don't think we should be distracted from that. He does believe there could be a role for something called direct air capture, sucking planet warming CO2 right out of the sky to help avoid runaway global warming. This is the biggest version of this that exists on the planet. Yes. This plant in Iceland run by Swiss company Climeworks is the world's largest operating direct air capture facility. We visited in 2021, the day they turned it on. These fans suck in air, CO2 is separated out, and then inside these huts, it's injected into the ground, where it's permanently stored in rock formations. Every ton of CO2 that we move is a ton that's actually helping fighting climate change and not contributing to global warming. But it can only remove about 4,000 of the nearly 40 billion tons of CO2 humans are pumping into the atmosphere every year. Larger facilities are now being built, including this one in West Texas. I'm excited. I think there's a, a tremendous amount of potential. John Northington believes carbon capture technologies can help, even if they're not a silver bullet. If you take that off the table, then you're trying to solve the problem, which is a very complex problem with one arm tied behind your back. For CBS Mornings, I'm Ben Tracy in Wilsonville, Alabama. I mean, that's a great piece from Ben Tracy. His yeah. reporting is terrific on this subject. The reality is with climate change, there are only hard choices. You can either change the economy and our energy system, and politically, people don't want to do that. We've right. seen that. Or right. you can bet on human ingenuity and an invention that somehow cleans up 
the, the climate. That seems to be politically more palatable, which is why you're seeing a lot of people banking on carbon capture. Yeah, we banking see, the right word. We see people are working 24-7 to make it better. We still have such a long way to go to get it right. And we have to get it right. And we no planet to, B, as we they say. Have to get right. it right.